More breaking news here on Dolphins today. The Miami Dolphins have signed punter Thomas Morstead to a one-year contract. So they bring him in on Tuesday for a visit to Miami and now sign him today. And if you haven't hit that big red subscribe button, please do so right now. Regardless of where I am, I was thinking about going golfing today. I would have been on, out in the golf course. I would have been doing a video like this. So regardless of where I'm at, I'm going to bring you breaking Dolphins news as it happens. It was my day off. You know, I was going to kick back and watch some, some Masters. But you know what? I got to keep you all in the loop. So hit that big red subscribe button right now and subscribe if you haven't already. And also turn on those notifications so you will get a noty right as I put a video out. I would really appreciate it. So like I said, they bring Morstead in on Tuesday. They decide to sign him today. This is not a surprise. They needed a punter. Chris Greer has filled all these needs across the offense and the defense this offseason. The team has gotten significantly better. Understandably, punter pretty low on the Dolphins' priority list. They did not look to fill that need as quickly. So there was no punter on the roster as of, as of this morning, right? There was no punter on the roster. They did not re-sign Michael Pilardi, so they needed a punter. They brought in Thomas Morstead for a visit, a veteran in the league, has been in the league 13 seasons, and has been a top 10 punter consistently throughout his entire career. Now, most notably, he was with the New Orleans Saints for 12 seasons. They shockingly cut him in 2020. I say shockingly because he's kind of a Saints legend, won a Super Bowl in New Orleans, was on that team way back in, in 09 with Drew Brees. So they, they cut Thomas Morstead, and then he went into last season without a home. Braden Mann gets injured, so he has a brief stint with the Jets, filling in for an injured Braden Mann. Braden Mann comes back. The Jets cut him. Two weeks later, he gets picked up by the Atlanta Falcons, where he spends the rest of the 2021 season. So grade the signing. Let me know what you think in the comment section. A, B, C, D, or F. Let me know what you're grading the Thomas Morstead signing. I'm going to give it a B, um, not a C, because it fills it fills in it fills a need. Right, the Dolphins did not have a punter. Now they do. It was important to get a punter on the roster. Now I'm sure a lot of y'all are a little bit upset about this because y'all want Matt Ariza, and that is the instant reaction that I'm seeing with Dolphins fans on Twitter that they're like, "We don't want Thomas Morstead. We want Matt Ariza." Let me be clear. This does not mean that the team will not draft Matt Ariza. It makes it a little bit unlikely that they would spend a third or a fourth round selection on a punter, especially given the fact that they only have four selections in this draft. So the fact that they're now going into the NFL draft in a few weeks with a punter on the roster makes a Matt Ariza selection unlikely, but I would not rule that out. They can bring Matt Ariza in have him compete with Thomas Morstead. I think Matt Ariza would win that job pretty easily. I don't think they would uh, draft a punter in the third or fourth round, and they're going to have to with one of those two selections because the Dolphins don't have a fifth or a sixth round pick, and he's not going to be on the board round seven. So they might have just wanted to sign Thomas Morstead just to get a punter on the roster, but they plan on taking Matt Ariza if he's there in round four. I don't think that's Chris Greer's thinking, uh, but it might be. So this does not mean that the Dolphins are not going to draft Matt Ariza, who is the best punter prospect of all time. His nickname is literally Punt God. That is how good he is. But I would say that makes it pretty unlikely. So I'm going to give it a B signing. I would have preferred to take Matt Ariza in the draft. Maybe fourth round would have been reaching on him a little bit, but he could be your punter for the next 15 years. Thomas Moore said this is just a one-year deal. He's 35 years old. He's aging. His production has gone down a little bit. Give him credit, though, because after the worst season of his career in New Orleans in 2020, he only averaged 43 yards a punt. He ranked ninth in the, he ranked ninth in the NFL with... 40, I should say 47.5 yards per punt last season. So it was a bounce back year for him. He proved he can still be a productive punter in the league. He doesn't have the biggest leg, but he's very, very accurate. And he's very, very good at getting it inside the 20, inside the 10. Uh, so that's the plus here for if you're Miami. He's not going to flip the field, though. 
uh, like a guy like Matt Ariza would. So I'm going to give the signing a B. I would really like for them to surprise me, though, and, and take Matt Ariza in the draft next month. So another, or I should say this month, another need filled for the Miami Dolphins. They've they've done it everywhere across uh, across the offense with the running backs and wide receivers and also on the defense, keeping that defense intact. Uh, another need, though, that we've talked about with this team is linebacker, and the Dolphins are bringing in Reuben Foster on a visit uh, Reuben Foster didn't even play in the NFL last season, and now he's coming uh, for a visit to the Miami Dolphins, as Barry Jackson reported. So let's break down Reuben Foster because this is a interesting development, to say the least. So Reuben Foster has had injury issues throughout his entire career. He didn't even, like I said, didn't even play last season because he wasn't on a team, but he was the 31st overall pick in 2017 by the 49ers out of Alabama. If you watch this guy play at Alabama, I mean, he was like Will Anderson out there, man. I mean, he was unbelievable. And I think we all thought he was going to be a six-time, seven-time pro bowler in the NFL because of how good he was at Alabama. Hasn't worked out like that. He's always had injury issues. Before the 2017 draft, he had surgery to repair a torn rotator cuff. During his rookie season, actually in the, in the first NFL game he played in week one in 17, uh, he suffered an ankle injury, missed six games, but still put together a very good rookie season. He had a 90.7 overall PFF grade that ranked first among all rookie linebackers and fourth amongst all of the 48 linebackers that were graded. So he had a very good rookie season. However, in 2018, he was suspended two games for violating the league's personal conduct policy, stemming from a weapons offense and a misdemeanor drug charge, and following another arrest for domestic violence on November 24, 2018, Foster was released by the 49ers. So injuries are not the only concern here for Reuben Foster. Have to add that he suffered a torn ACL and uh, MCL I should say torn ACL and LCL, and was placed on IR right after he was picked up by Washington in 2019. He actually suffered those injuries in his first practice with the team in 2019. Uh, last year, he had a workout with the New York Jets, no deal reached. Then he had a workout with the Jacksonville Jaguars, no deal reached. And then he had a workout with the Cleveland Browns last September, no deal was reached. So he did not even play in the NFL last season, the Dolphins, with a potential need at linebacker, bringing him in. I'll say this. Uh, Reuben Foster, if he gets signed, might not even make the team. They're just going to they're just gonna work him out, see if he looks healthy, see if he still looks athletic, see if he still looks physical. Uh, I'm sure Reuben Foster, understandably, with his history, is going to have to answer some pretty tough questions uh, today from Chris Greer and Mike McDaniel, um, which I'm sure they're going to have. So we'll see what happens. The Dolphins, I've said it again and again, need to sign a linebacker or draft a linebacker. I love the four guys they have starting right now. They've re-signed a Landon Roberts to a team-friendly one-year $2.75 million deal. And a Landon had a very good bounce-back season last year after really struggling in 2020. So I like the four guys they have, but they could still get a little bit better at that position. I don't see Reuben Foster, though, going in and and, and taking a starting job from somebody. I don't think that's going to happen. But he might make the team. Uh, he might back up a Landon Roberts. We'll see what happens. So let me know what you think uh, in the comments section. What's your one-word reaction to the Dolphins bringing in Reuben Foster for a visit, who, number one, has a lot of injury concerns, and number two, has a lot of off-the-field concerns as well, um, I would say surprising. I mean, there's plenty of big name linebacker for agents still available. Kyle, uh, Kyle Van Noy, one of those names. Anthony Barr, another big name that's still out there. So I'm a little bit surprised, uh, but let me know what y'all think in the comment section. Again, please like the video and subscribe. If you love the Dolphins, we got you, and we're going to break down this breaking news as it comes in. This has been Will Scott. Talk to you soon. Go Fence.